As we conclude this lecture, we present the histology of the heart. The drawing illustrates the heart after cutting from the apex to the base in a front section, exposing the walls of the right and left ventricles and the two atria. The thickness of the heart wall varies with each of the four chambers, thickest in the left ventricle, thinner in the right ventricle, and very thin in both atria. Atria is the term that actually refers to the area for blood containment of these structures as in the atrium of a building, the open space, just inside the entrance. Another term for these structures is oracle, that is a descriptive term of their external physical appearance. They look like ears. An oracle is a term meaning ear. The oracles are a small conical pouch that projects from each atrium of the heart. As in the blood vessels, the heart is composed of three tissue layers. One is to provide, provide a suitable lining, the inner layer, the endocardium. The next is to provide the mechanical contraction of the heart to function to pump blood, the middle layer, the myocardium. And the next or outer layer, the epicardium, is to provide a smooth surface and some pericardial sac fluid to minimize friction as the heart beats and to can provide a connective tissue or adipose tissue rich area for the passage of the major coronary arteries, veins, and nerves. This is how a heart would appear if it were examined unfixed at the autopsy table. Note the surface of heart valves is white. This is because the endocardium is very thick and this thick endocardium cont continues throughout the atria. Heart valves are specialized projections of the endocardium. Irregular bands of myocardium projected into the lumen of the ventricle and these are called trabecula, carnae, trabecula because they are band-like projections and carnae because they contain flesh, carnae, that is myocardium. Papillary muscles are myocardial muscle groups that insert in the valve leaflets by way of tendons, the corda tendinae. Finally, you can see the very thin endocardium and epicardium with the myocardium between like the, uh, between like the meat in a sandwich. This is a section through the left ventricle. This is a snapshot of one of the two virtual slides you are assigned to study as a part of your laboratory exercise. You can observe the relationship between the endocardium, myocardium, which is thickest, and the epicardium, and the two trabecular carnate. The endocardium consists of a single layer of endothelial cells and a small amount of associated loose connective tissue that may, can, may contain elastic fibers and smooth muscle cells. The myocardium is dominated by striated cardiac myocytes arranged in spiraling bands with blood vessels and nerves. The epicardium is composed of a single layer of simple cuboidal or squamous epithelial cells with loose connective tissue between that layer and the myocardium. Epicardial loose connective tissue contains fat more along the major coronary arteries as they pass over the anterior posterior aspects and less between where there are no major uh, blood vessels. Cardiac myocytes are shown here as a review of cardiac striated muscle cells. Recall that they have one nucleus, the cells are branched, and the striations are not as obvious as in striated skeletal muscle cells. Also recall that cardiac myocytes are connected end to end by intercalated discs. A review of the intercalated disc. The intercalated disc is a compound cell junction comprised of three junctions which are distributed over a large surface area. That surface area has a horizontal and vertical plane which define the distribution and function of the cell junctions. The vertical planes contain the endosomes and fascia adherents because this is where the tensional force is the greatest. The horizontal plane contains the gap junctions and aids in the electronic coupling of the cardiac myocytes. Observe in this slide the SA or sinoatrial node, the AV or atrioventricular uh, node, the bundle of His, and the right and left bundle branches. This is the Purkinje system, consisting of modified cardiac myocytes. Modified cardiac myocytes in the normal node 
sinoatrial node automatically generate impulses that are carried over the auricles to the AV node. The AV node has its own rhythm, but the sinus rhythm from the SA node overrides it. In normal sinus rhythm, from 60 to 100 beats per minute, electrical impulses from the SA node travel to the AV node with successful contraction of the two atria. The electrical impulses from the AV node reaching the cardiac myocytes by way of the bundle of his and the right and left bundle branches successfully contract the ventricles. The bundle of his and the right and left bundle branches are composed of modified cardiac myocytes, the Purkinje fibers, that function like nerve fibers in the heart, conducting the impulse to contract to the cardiac myocytes of the ventricles. The histology of these Purkinje fibers is presented in the next slide. Note there are smooth muscle fibers in the endocardium and the elastic fibers are present, although not seen here. Smooth muscle cells and elastic fibers help keep the endocardium from wrinkling during cardiac contractions. Observe the Purkinje fibers in the endocardium. These special cells course through the endocardium of both sides of the interventricular muscular septum as the right and left bundle branches. They are connected by intercalated discs as cardiac myocytes are, but the resemblance stops there. They only have a thin rim of myofibrils just under the plasma membrane. Most of the cytoplasm is filled with glycogen. Histologists Max Moff and Bloom in 1942 described the Purkinje fibers as large capsules of glycogen connected by irregular groups of myofibrils. The peripheral distribution of myofibrils and glycogen can be seen better in this higher magnification. The purpose of so much glycogen is not known. However, some investigators suggest the Purkinje fibers generate energy to maintain themselves by way of a carb carbohydrate metabolism. This is a diagrammatic representation of what is referred to as the cardiac skeleton. It is composed of dense connective tissue that forms rings around the outflow vessels, the aorta and pulmonary arteries, and the communication between the atria and the ventricles. The dense connective tissue is layered in rings and in that sense can be considered dense regular connective tissue, but not exactly ordered as in tendons and ligaments. In large animal, animals, for example, the cow, the cardiac skeleton is composed of bone tissue. This is because the cow has such a massive heart that the muscles need a firm place to anchor. The very dense connective tissue provides physical support for the vials as well as serving as the anchoring point for all cardiac musculature. That is, it is the origin and insertion for all cardiac muscle fascicles. It is also totally separates the upper part of the heart from the lower part, except for the AV bundle. In pathological conditions, small strands of musculature can span the cardiac skeleton thus short-circuiting the physiology of conduction. This condition is known as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. This is an example of one myocardial fascicle which originates at the dorsal side of the cardiac skeleton and then proceeds along a spiral or helical pathway to insert into the valve cusp by way of the papillary muscles. This drawing of how one muscle fascicle arises and inserts into the cardiac skeleton at the base where the atria and ventricle meet helps to explain how the heart functions as a pump. Recall that the Purkinje system by way of the right and left bundle branches delivers the impulse or cardiac muscle contraction to the muscle at the apex of the heart first and then the contraction proceeds in a wave to the atrioventricular region thus forcing the blood into the aorta and pulmonary arteries. The wave of contraction over the atria grows in the opposite direction after being initiated at the sinoatrial node to force blood into the ventricles. These impulses are coordinated so that the atria contract first, followed by the ventricles. This lecture has presented the basic construct of the cardiovascular system that is composed of capillaries, arterioles, venules, medium-sized muscular or distributing arteries, and medium-sized veins large elastic arteries and large veins. 
the basic histological construct of all of these organs in the cardiovascular system is three layers, the enema, media, and adventitia. These names are carried throughout except in the heart where these three layers are named endocardium, myocardium, and epicardium with similar but not identical tissue histology compared to the blood vessels. Finally, the impulse generating and conducting system of the heart was presented that included a presentation of the histology of specialized cardiac myocyte, the Purkinje fiber that conducts a stimulatory impulse throughout the heart to initiate each contraction.